so I'm playing with the Vents Herd Manager on my computer, just learning how all the features work. We're doing a four day training on the cows right now. So the first day we put the vents around the perimeter of the pasture where the existing fence is with about 20 or 30 feet of vents inside the fence. So they, as they went approach the fence, they would get a shock. And then the second day we moved it into about a hundred feet inside the fence line. And then today is the third day and we add audio tones. So now before they get a shock, they get a beep, and that's supposed to train them to not even get a shock. When they hear the beep, they know that they're gone too far and will turn around. And then tomorrow on the fourth day, we'll put a vents line across the pasture and herd all the cows to one side and then see how it works to keep them on one side with no existing fence there. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like on the computer. So those are all our cows and their location. Um, you can zoom in and see right where the cows are at. Um, right here we have a break in the fence line because where this cow is there's a water gap so we had to leave a break in the fence line otherwise it'd be solid. So you can see the yellow is how wide the shock zone is. So the white line is the existing fence. So we're only about maybe 80 to 100 feet inside with the shock zone. And you can make that width anywhere from, it's in all in meters, because this is a was developed overseas, but 15 meters up to about 200 meters wide. So that's like 45 feet up to 600 feet wide. But I don't think you'd ever want one that wide. Um, so it's hard to tell if it's working or not. We had two cows crawl out of the water gap. So I built a fence around them trying to contain them there, but they apparently pushed through the vents. So I'm not sure how that works. Um, I'll have to get them in tomorrow and see. So that's kind of the gist of it. Um, we played with the collars a little bit at a range day tour. We held the collar, or I did, and, and another guy, and it delivers just a little bit of a shock, maybe like a two or three on the electric fence, and it's in line. So like every 10 feet, you'd get a buzz, and then two feet later, you get a shock, and then 10 feet, you get a buzz, and then a shock. So it just keeps having lines of shocks to hopefully bring the cows back. But we go on the forest in three, you know, three days with the cows, so we'll see how it works. But it's kind of cool, you can just bring it up and see where all your cows are. I've been having fun watching them. You can see them go to water at about 11 in the heat of the day and then kind of lay around. And then as it gets cool, they move up onto the mountain up here on the higher ground. So just for the information and knowing where your cow's at is, is worth a lot. And hopefully this fence system works. So stay tuned as we'll get these cows moved and they'll just be contained in a vents line instead of a physical fence. Got the little white truck loaded up with one tower that we had temporarily set to train. And we're gonna be taking it to the top of that mountain right there and set one and about two miles back on another big ridge. Have pretty good coverage of the whole area. Got the first one installed up on top of the mountain. This ground all out here to the top of that hill is part of the forest permit. We had to do a little off-roading to get up here, but right out there, the dark green irrigated meadows is the ranch where the cows are at. They're just a little bit to the right of that green irrigated. And we're gonna put the tower right up there on the peak by the tree line.
Driving the stakes is the hardest part of the install because the tower locations were right on top of a bunch of rocks and shell on the ridges. The first tower we put in is right there on that ridge top. So between the two of them, they can cover all the valleys and high spots on our forest permit. This is the control box with all the electronics for the tower. And there's the four batteries that are charged by the solar panel that's on top. And then the antenna has a cell phone receiver and a radio signal sender that goes to the collars. Another look of the valley below where the cows are right there is the snowshoe ranch that we'll get the cows from tomorrow. Here we are. Gathering the cows in the last pasture by the ranch and then we're going to head up to the forest today and uh, Reese has been playing with the different vents possibilities, changing fences. Right now we have, um, he has an invisible fence preventing them from being up here. So that's working pretty well. A few have lost their collars we are learning this morning, but we are headed for our big day up on the forest drive. Cows hit a fence line so you can hear some of the collars beeping as they approach it. And then they turn around. They figured it out. going out ahead of us with their herd of cows. This is a popular day and the first day you get to go on the forest permit so everybody gets going right away. Corgi's having a great day. Just chase cows. Happy boy. Riders. Nice day. It's supposed to be in the 60s, which is just about perfect. So the cows don't get too hot on their big drive. in the woods sometimes. They like to hide and you can't get to them. Come on girls, let's go. Let's go. Push up, let's go.
babies before we let them loose on the mountain. have the cows on the forest now this is right here is where we paired them out and so this is the virtual fence that I have them placed in and I just um, changed the fence boundary and so the cows are updating so the black ones have received the signal from the tower and their fence line is updated and the yellowish orange are still in the process of receiving it so this was just a couple minutes ago so right here where the green line is is an existing fence so we brought them in through this break in the virtual fence and then this triangle shape there is no existing fence so that they're just being contained by the the virtual fence they've been in there for four days now and we had only one cow escape and she's up in here and I'm not sure what happened if she ran through it or possibly a bull that left I'm not sure I'm thinking it's a cow um, so they'll be in here it's 400 acres I'll leave them in there for about two weeks and they'll have that eight down and then I've created my next pasture that I'm gonna let them in so I can choose it to display forest two so that will be this large area here and we'll leave them in there probably until at least first part of September. Then I'll create a, a fence that lets them down in this area that's more creek bottoms, but then fence them off of the creek. So I left this little path here because there's a, a water tank there. So I want cows to be able to come back to water if they're stuck in this area because the next water is all the way over here and here so overall i've been happy with it we've had a few cows get through the line but not very many and this seems to be holding them and it's kind of nice to be able to see where your cows are because this will usually take us two weeks to get all the cows down out of here by the time we find them so when gathering time comes i hope i can just have them herded down to the bottom and know where they're all at so there's an update on our current vents project and how it works on the computer. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.